Section two of the Adventures of Johnny Chuck. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Adventures of Johnny Chuck by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter five. Johnny Chuck becomes dissatisfied. Johnny Chuck was unhappy. Here it was, the glad springtime, when everybody is supposed to be the very happiest, and Johnny Chuck was unhappy. Why was he unhappy? Well, he hardly knew himself. He had slept comfortably all the long winter. He had awakened very, very hungry, but now he had plenty to eat. All about him the birds were singing or busily at work building new homes, and still Johnny Chuck felt unhappy. It was dreadful to feel this way and not have any good reason for it. One bright morning Johnny Chuck sat on his doorstep watching Drummer the Woodpecker building a new home in the old apple tree. Drummer's red head flew back and forth, back and forth, and his sharp bill cut out tiny bits of wood. It was slow work, it was hard work, but Drummer seemed happy, very happy indeed. It was watching Drummer that started Johnny Chuck to thinking about his own home. He had always thought it a very nice home. He had built it just as he wanted it. From the doorstep he could look in all directions over the green meadows. It had a front door and a hidden back door. Yes, it was a very nice home indeed. But now, all of a sudden, Johnny Chuck became dissatisfied with his home. It was too near the lone little path. Too many people knew where it was. It wasn't big enough. The front door ought to face the other way. <laughs> Dear me, what a surprising lot of faults a discontented heart can find with things that have always been just right. It was so with Johnny Chuck. That house in which he had spent so many happy days, which had protected him from all harm, of which he had been so proud when he first built it, was now the meanest house in the world. If other people had new houses, well, why shouldn't he? The more he thought about it, the more dissatisfied and discontented he became, and, of course, the more unhappy. You know one cannot be dissatisfied and discontented and happy at the same time. Now, dissatisfied and discontented people are not at all pleasant to have around. Johnny Chuck had always been one of the best-natured of all the little meadow people, and everybody liked him. So Jimmy Skunk didn't know quite what to make of it when he came down the lone little path and found Johnny Chuck so out of sorts that he wouldn't even answer when spoken to. Jimmy Skunk was feeling very good-natured himself. He had just had a fine breakfast of fat beetles, and he was at peace with all the world. So he sat down beside Johnny Chuck and began to talk, just as if Johnny Chuck was his usual good-natured self. "'It's a fine day,' said Jimmy Skunk. Johnny Chuck just sniffed. "'You're looking very fine,' said Jimmy. Johnny just scowled. "'I think you've got the best place on the green meadows for a house,' said Jimmy, pretending to admire the view. Johnny scowled harder than ever. "'In such a splendid house,' said Jimmy, "'I wish I had one like it.' "'I'm glad you like it. You can have the old thing,' snapped Johnny Chuck. "'What's that?' demanded Jimmy Skunk, opening his eyes very wide. "'I said that you can have it. I'm going to move,' replied Johnny Chuck. Now, he really hadn't thought of moving until that very minute, and he didn't know why he had said it. But he had said it, and because he is an obstinate little fellow, he stuck to it. "'When can I move in?' asked Jimmy Skunk, his eyes twinkling. "'Right away, if you want to,' replied Johnny Chuck, and swaggered off down the lone little path, leaving Jimmy Skunk to stare after him as if he thought Johnny Chuck had suddenly gone crazy. As indeed he did. Chapter 6. Johnny Chuck Turns Tramp Johnny Chuck had turned tramp. Yes, sir, Johnny Chuck had turned tramp. It was a funny thing to do, but he had done it. He didn't know why he had done it, excepting that he had become dissatisfied and discontented and unhappy in his old home. And then, almost without thinking what he was doing, he had told Jimmy Skunk that he could have the house he had worked so hard to build the summer before, and of which he had been so proud. 
Then Johnny Chuck had swaggered away down the lone little path without once looking back at the home he was leaving. Where was he going? Well, to tell the truth, Johnny didn't know. He was going to see the world, and perhaps when he had seen the world he would build him a new house. So as long as he was in sight of Jimmy Skunk, he swaggered along quite as if he was used to traveling about, without any snug house to go to at night. But right down in his heart, Johnny Chuck didn't feel half so bold as he pretended. You see, not since he was a little Chuck and had run away from old Mother Chuck with Peter Rabbit had he ever been very far from his own doorstep. He had always been content to grow fat and roly-poly right near his own home, and listen to the tales of the great world from Jimmy Skunk and Peter Rabbit and Bobby Coon and Unc Billy Possum, all of whom are great travelers. But now, here he was, actually setting forth, and without a home to come back to. You see, he had made up his mind that no matter what happened, he wouldn't come back, after having given his house to Jimmy Skunk. When he had reached a place where he thought Jimmy Skunk couldn't see him, Johnny Chuck turned and looked back, and a queer little feeling seemed to make a lump that filled his throat and choked him. The fact is, Johnny Chuck had already began to feel homesick. But he swallowed very hard, and tried to make himself think that he was having a splendid time. He stopped looking back, and started on, and as he tramped along, he tried to sing a song he had once heard Jimmy Skunk sing. The world may stretch full far and wide, what matters that to me? I'll tramp it up, I'll tramp it down, for I am bold and free. It was a very brave little song, but Johnny Chuck didn't feel half so brave and bold as he tried to think he did. Already he was beginning to wonder where he would spend the night. Then he thought of old Whitetail the Marsh Hawk, who had given him such a fright and had so nearly caught him when he was a little fellow. The thought made him look around hastily, and there was old Whitetail himself, sailing back and forth hungrily just ahead of him. A great fear took possession of Johnny Chuck, and he made himself as flat as possible in the grass, for there was no place to hide. He made up his mind that anyway he would fight. Near and nearer came old Whitetail. Finally he passed right over Johnny Chuck, but he didn't offer to touch him. Indeed, it seemed to Johnny that old Whitetail actually grinned and winked at him. And right then all his fear left him. Pooh, said Johnny Chuck scornfully, who's afraid of him? He suddenly realized that he was no longer a helpless little Chuck who couldn't take care of himself, but big and strong, with sharp teeth with which his old enemy had no mind to make a closer acquaintance, when there were mice and snakes to be caught without fighting. So he puffed out his chest and went on, and actually began to enjoy himself, and almost wished for a chance to show how big and strong he was. CHAPTER Seven, JOHNNY'S FIRST ADVENTURE After old Whitetail the Marsh Hawk passed Johnny Chuck without offering to touch him, Johnny began to feel very brave and bold and important. He strutted and swaggered along as much as his short legs would let him. He held his head very high. Already he felt that he had had an adventure, and he longed for more. He forgot the terrible lonesome feeling of a little while before. He forgot that he had given away the only home he had. He didn't know just why, but right down deep inside he had a sudden feeling that he really didn't care a thing about that old home. In fact, he felt as if he wouldn't care if he never had another home. Yes, sir, that is the way that Johnny Chuck felt. Do you know why? Just because he had begun to realize how big and strong he really was. Now, it is a splendid thing to feel big and strong and brave, a very splendid thing. But it is a bad thing to let that feeling turn to pride, foolish pride. Of course, old Whitetail hadn't really been afraid of Johnny Chuck. He had simply passed Johnny Chuck with a wink, because there was plenty to eat without the trouble of fighting. And Whitetail doesn't fight just for the fun of it. But foolish Johnny Chuck really thought that old Whitetail was afraid of him. The more he thought about it, the more tickled he felt, and the more puffed up he felt. 
He began to talk to himself and to brag. <laughs> yes, sir, Johnny Chuck began to brag. I'm not afraid of anyone. They're all afraid of me. I only have to show my teeth to make them turn and flee. Pooh, said a voice. Pooh, it would take two like you to make me run away. Johnny Chuck gave a startled jump. There was a strange Chuck glaring at him from behind a little bunch of grass. He was a big gray old Chuck whom Johnny never had seen on the Green Meadows before. And he didn't look the least bit afraid. No, sir, he didn't look the teeniest, weeniest bit afraid. Somehow Johnny Chuck didn't feel half so big and strong and brave as he had a few minutes before. But it wouldn't do to let this stranger know it. Of course not. So, though he felt very small inside, Johnny made all his hair bristle up and tried to look very fierce. Who are you, and what are you doing on my green meadows? he demanded. Your green meadows, your green meadows, ho, 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 your green meadows. The stranger laughed an unpleasant laugh. How long since you owned the green meadows? I have just come down onto them from the old pasture, and I like the looks of them so well that I think I will stay. So run along, little boaster. There isn't room for both of us here, and the sooner you trot along, the better. The stranger suddenly showed all his teeth and gritted them unpleasantly. Now, when Johnny Chuck heard this, great anger filled his heart. A stranger had ordered him to leave the Green Meadows where he had been born and always lived. He could hardly believe his own ears. He, Johnny Chuck, would show this stranger who was master here. With a squeal of rage, Johnny sprang at the gray old Chuck. Then began such a fight as the merry little breezes of old Mother Westwind had never seen before. They danced around excitedly and cried, How dreadful! and hoped that Johnny Chuck would win, for you know they loved him very much. Over and over the two little fighters rolled, biting and scratching and tearing and growling and snarling. Jolly, round, red Mr. Sun hid his face behind a cloud so as not to see such a dreadful sight. The stranger had been in many fights, and he was very crafty. For a while Johnny felt that he was getting the worst of it, and he began to wonder if he really would have to leave the Green Meadows. The very thought filled him with new rage, and he fought harder than ever. Now the stranger was old, and his teeth were worn, while Johnny was young, and his teeth were very sharp. After a long, long time Johnny felt the stranger growing weaker. Johnny fought harder than ever. At last the stranger cried, Enough! And when he could break away, started back towards the old pasture. Johnny Chuck had won. Chapter 8 Johnny Has Another Adventure Johnny Chuck lay stretched out on the cool, soft grass of the green meadows, panting for breath. He was very tired and very sore. His face was scratched and bitten. His clothes were torn, and he smarted dreadfully in a dozen places, but still Johnny Chuck was happy. When he raised his head to look, he could see a gray old Chuck limping off towards the old pasture. Once in a while the gray old Chuck would turn his head and show his teeth, but he kept right on towards the old pasture. Johnny Chuck smiled. It had been a great fight, and more than once Johnny Chuck had thought that he should have to give up. He thought of this now, and then he thought with shame of how he had bragged and boasted just before the fight. What if he had lost? He resolved that he would never again brag or boast, but he also made up his mind that if anyone should pick a quarrel with him, he would show that he wasn't afraid. It was getting late in the afternoon when Johnny finally felt rested enough to go on. He had got to find a place to spend the night. He hobbled along, for he was very stiff and sore, until he came to the edge of the green meadows, where they meet the green forest. Jolly, round, red Mr. Sun was almost ready to go down to his bed behind the purple hills. Shadows were already beginning to creep through the green forest. Somehow they gave Johnny Chuck that same lonesome feeling that he had had when he first left his old home. You see, he had always lived out in the green meadows, and somehow he was afraid of the green forest in the night. 
So, instead of going into the green forest, he wandered along the edge of it, looking for a place in which to spend the night. At last he came to a hollow log lying just out on the edge of the green meadows. Very carefully Johnny Chuck examined it, to be sure that no one else was using it. "'It's just the place I'm looking for,' he said aloud. Just then there was a sharp hiss, a very fierce hiss. Johnny Chuck felt the hair on his neck rise as it always did when he heard that hiss, and he wasn't at all surprised when he turned his head to find Mr. Blacksnake close by. Mr. Blacksnake glided swiftly up to the old log and coiled himself in front of the opening. Then he raised his head and ran out his tongue in the most impudent way. "'Run along, Johnny Chuck. I've decided to sleep here myself tonight,' he said sharply. Now, when Johnny Chuck was a very little fellow, he had been in great fear of Mr. Blacksnake, as he had had reason to be. And because he didn't know any better, he had been afraid ever since. Mr. Blacksnake knew this, and so now he looked as ugly as he knew how. But, you see, he didn't know about the great fight that Johnny Chuck had just won. Now, to win an honest fight always makes one feel very strong and very sure of oneself. Johnny looked at Mr. Blacksnake, and saw that Mr. Blacksnake didn't look half as big as Johnny had always thought he did. He made up his mind that as he had found the old log first, he had the best right to it. "'I found it first, and I'm going to keep it.' snapped Johnny Chuck, and with every hair on end and gritting his teeth, he walked straight towards Mr. Blacksnake. Now, Mr. Blacksnake is a great bluffer, while at heart he is really a coward. With a fierce hiss, he rushed right at Johnny Chuck, expecting to see him turn tail and run. But Johnny stood his ground and showed all his sharp teeth. Instead of attacking Johnny, Mr. Blacksnake glided past him and sneaked away through the grass. Johnny Chuck chuckled as he crept into the hollow log. "'Only a coward runs away without fighting,' he murmured sleepily. End of section 2